Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I'm doing a video for the first time in weeks, guys, because my camera is working today. So that's so awesome. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're about to do. I thank you for the lives you're about to change, the situations you're about to rearrange. So whatever you're going to to bring about um, having to do with today's sermon, for me, the atmosphere, with your spirit, love, grace, and joy, give us everything we need. Let me say, t let me say something today to change the trajectory of someone's life, because it's not you, it's not me, it's you. Father, speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk a bit about my own journey and writing. And um, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this right now. So I'm not going to give a title here because... I'm not sure what I'm going to title this. Uh, I think I'm going to call it Labor Pains. Okay. So, as you guys know, I'm a talker. I am I love to talk and I love to tell stories in my sermon. But this week, the Lord has impressed upon me to share about my own writing journey. <laughs> And I said, what, you want me to get this personal? He's like, it'll help somebody to know that they're not alone. Okay, so, um, I started, um, novel writing, uh, when I was quite young. Um, I think I was about... 10 or 11 when my when my first fictional book called my brother the pain uh, <laughs> um, came um, was in my library and I had a follow-up one that was, was talking about my sister the bug so from then on, I've always loved to write uh, fiction. And in 2009, I came out with my first book called Pictures of Silver. And then I started writing pictures in 2005. I was 21 years old. So I, I wrote pictures, and when I wrote Pictures of Silver, it came so easily. Like, it was just like, I would sit, I, I think it took me about uh, a few months to write my first draft, and then I, um, and then I started the publishing journey, which is, just a nightmare if you don't know what you're doing. Because what happens usually in publishing is that you have to fill out um, a proposal. They ask about audience. They ask about what's different about your novel. And they ask basically you to pick apart your own work. And just... So I, I did many of those, many, many proposals. And then I got many, many rejection letters. I got close to publishing Pictures of Silver through a publisher many, 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 many times. But it never felt right. So um, 
a friend of mine who who was the president at Tyndale College where I was going at the time found out that I um, was writing a book and he offered to help me publish it. So we we did all this. We we um, we the press. We did a press release. We did the covers, book cover. We we did all this, and and with his help, I finally got it published. And um, after Pictures of Silver was published, we shopped it around the stores and stuff. Um, and that's when I was on 100 Huntley Street. Many of you would have seen the interview with me on 100 Huntley Street, sharing my testimony. But the thing with um, sharing my testimony is they want the testimony, but they don't want me to really talk about the book or the writing. They want to know about my disability and how I've overcome, and that's fine. Uh, for book sales, though, it didn't do much of anything for my book. So, um, so long story short, the first book, didn't sell really well because it, it it got cl close to being published a few times but it it just didn't feel right for several reasons so I said no um, so I went on TV did that that didn't help because my interview is about my disability and that's cool um, but it didn't do much for book sales. And then I, I, I wrote my second novel called Jesse's Destiny. And Jesse's Destiny, um, that one didn't go anywhere at all. I tried, but after Pictures of Silver, I was kind of dis discouraged with the industry, because that one, I put the effort forward, but was not able to get anything. I even went on TV and wasn't able to get any traction for the book. Um, so with Jesse's Destiny, I wrote it um, in kind of the same amount of time. And then when Pictures of Silver was published, I was already working on Jesse's Destiny, uh, which is about a fictional uh, Christian music star who, who falls in love with one of his biggest fans, and that fan uh, gets paralyzed coming back from their honeymoon, and it's and it's a and it's a and it's a great r romantic story. So. But because of the discouragement of pictures of, of silver, I didn't, um, I, I didn't put as much effort into publishing uh, Jesse's Destiny. And then that was about, that I think about to, to go, Two oh seven or two oh eight, Jesse's Destiny, and then uh, about two sixteen, I published the Soldier and the Stripper, and um, this. And that really didn't go anywhere, but blessedly, I, at, at that time, 2016, I had put all of this stuff on Facebook. I put 
effort into marketing and all that stuff. And I decided to e-publish um, The Soldier and the Stripper. And, and I found this website uh, called Inkit, which is a reader-based publishing um, thing. So which, which means you fill out a form, you wait for approval, and once it's on the site, people can read it. And the more people that read it, the more people you get to pop, um, the more people get to read it, is the more it, chance it gets to be published. And it gets published on Amazon and, and all those other places. So, I think, or I think it's just on Amazon. So, so what I did was put all three of my novels on this website called Inc. And they're still there to this day. Um... That was about six years ago. And I have been coming up with story ideas ever since then. But quite honestly, guys, I've been too scared to write. I'm like, oh, I could never do it again. Or, oh, I'm not as good as this writer. This writer's so fabulous that you know, description and all that, and I'm not as fabulous at it, and never minding that that's what good editing is for. Um, I, I have always been, I have always been saying, people, uh, I have always been saying, oh, well, I can't write as good as this person or that person or, Whatever. And because when you're a writer and you read as widely and as much as I do, you kind of get um, kind of. It kind of keeps you stagnant in the way because you're like, I can't. I don't have the wording power for like those people and whatever. But. Um, I have some good news. Uh, it's, it's been a struggle to write again after six years because I'm like, do, do I really want to do this again? So I have some good news. I am, as of yesterday, I started... Um, a prologue to my new novel. Now, before you get excited and before I hear all kinds of comments, oh, congratulations. It is, um, it is going to be an intensive labor to, um, to put out this novel. I've had this story idea along with many others for years and I've always been too afraid to do it but the Lord said I'll be with you and the story needs to be told so I am now working on my new novel and yeah I'm working on my new novel and the Lord wants me to tell this story because um, there are a lot of you that have given up on your dreams like, like me. Um, when you've given up on your dreams, you don't really say you've given up on your dreams. You kind of, uh, kind of like, kind of like to defer, but really you've given up. And the Lord just saying, saying, keep going. 
these are labor pains of what you've gone through in the past through, uh, few years. It's all labor pains. And you're growing from this. Keep going. Don't give up. And that's what he wants me to tell you. And you're looking at somebody who, who up until a week ago had given up on ever writing a word um, because it commercially didn't go well. And the Lord said to me, it's, it's not about whether it commercially gets published or goes well. It's about doing what I've called you to do. And it's time for you to get back into the labor room and labor again. So I'm, I'm writing again, you guys. And it is, it took a lot to get here. I've been through a lot the past uh, six years, a lot of doubt, a lot of tears, a lot of, should I do this anymore? A lot. A lot of, of soul searching and the Lord saying uh, there are other people like me out there who have given up thinking that they're too old, thinking that, you know, it's all past for them. But the Lord said, no, it's not all past for you. And the labor pains that you're going through at whatever dream you buried are going to be worth it. And he said, take up those dead dreams, those dead things that you think are not, are not going to be successful and dust them off and do it again, do it again. And he said, just take baby steps. You don't, he said to me, you don't have to finish the whole book. And one day, you just take baby steps. He's like, there's no time limit. But ju just, just put the first uh, word on video. Because I give the excuse, well, Lord, I hate using dragon to write and it always makes mistakes, it always makes me um, uh, crazy because it always, there's spelling mistakes and whatever. And he says, uh, you don't have to physically put words on the page. He's like, you do have a video camera, and plus, even if the video camera is not working, you do have a program that you use um, to upload on YouTube. So use that and put them as private videos or unlisted videos on YouTube so that no one can see them but you. And when you need to, you can get an editor to help you hone and, and physically write the novel. So, so he's like, just videotape it and put it uh, privately on YouTube. And I said, okay, God. So I did that. I got the first draft of the prologue yesterday. So I'm writing again, guys, and I'm telling you that although it's, um, full of labor pains and ups and downs and doubt. I'm still doing it. And I'm telling you that you can too. Your, your dreams are as dead as you think they are. Your dreams are as dead as you think they are. As a man thinks, so is he. And those are not just platitudes. If you think your dreams are dead, they are. But they can be, they can rise again. 
they can be flourishing again. They can be awesome again. And the Lord's saying, your dreams are as dead as your thoughts. So wake up those thoughts. Know that if he put it in you, he'll get the res he'll have the resources on the other side of that to help you get that business going, get that book going. Uh, you know, he'll have the resources to help you achieve your dreams. And all you need to do is tentatively, tentatively take that first step. You don't even have to be confident in them. He says he's confident in them and he is confident in you. Because he put those desires in your heart. He put those dreams in your mind because that's what he's purposed in you to do. And there will be doubt, there will be labor pains, there will be, there will be uncertainty, there will be uh, low self-esteem, there will be questioning, but you need the wrestling. Because what the wrestling does is make you stronger and it fortifies you. It fortifies you and through the wrestling, through the doubt, through the pain, all of that is fortifying you into something greater. So de I declare right now that the dead dreams are rising. I declare that the dead dreams are coming alive, oh God. And I declare that the dead that dead dreams are coming to fruition. And I declare that through there will be testimonies of uh, you, God, bringing dreams to life, bringing hopes to life. I declare right now that there are married couples struggling to have a baby and they've given up on it because the doctor says it's impossible. But nothing is impossible with you. And we don't even have to... I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something really... It would sound off, but if you listen carefully, it's not off. You don't even have to have the faith. Even if it's on a shaky step. Even if it's just one word of a book. If you start it, he will give you the, the courage and the know-how to finish it. Because I know that sometimes it's very difficult to have faith. Like, we say that have faith, you don't have to see it. Just know that he's God in it, and that's true. But sometimes... As human, in our humanness, we don't have faith. It's hard to have faith. But I'm saying, even if you don't, and if this is the shakiest step, just start. Just start anywhere. And j just know that God will, God will be with you in your process. And all those people who have not get, given up, you, your turn is coming. Your turn is coming. And those people who need their huspa back, or their mojo back, or their get up and go, has got up and left, it's coming back. Just take a tentative step. Even if you're not sure, just take that step. And the Lord will be waiting with resources. Whatever you need, the people you need to come around you to help you with this project. And this will not be like the last time. And like me, with whatever endeavor, 
you've tried and tried and tried and tried. And the Lord says, try again. Try again and again. And sometimes it'll, it'll break through. And many of you, like me, are talented in many avenues. And for us who are talented in many avenues, he said, it'll break through somewhere. And once a door opens somewhere, it'll open to other places. And he says, don't be afraid to knock on doors because you're afraid of getting rejected. Because somebody one day will open the door for you somewhere. Somebody someday will open the door for you somewhere. So keep going, keep pushing, keep, keep on keeping on. And know that God is there. God is there in your pain. God is there in your humanness. Just keep on. Don't give up. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the courage to share this personal story about my writing journey. Thank you, Lord, for just um, being with me and just uh, showing me the way through this journey. And thank you, Lord, for giving me the courage to write again. In the name of Jesus, amen. And I have another thing to say. Um, this latest novel is not, not predominantly a Christian novel. And I was afraid to write it because, oh, I'm like, this story idea is a great idea, but it's not Christian. It's not, um typical Christian novel. Uh, what if they don't like it? What if they don't like me? What if the firing squad comes with me on social media? He's like, I will be with you through all of it. He's like, I, and he, he's saying to some of you, some of you are afraid because what you have to do is totally outside of what you have been told you you can do or what you've been told you can be. He's like, I'm the God of the impossible. I'm the God of the new. I'm the God of the unorthodox. And he says, some of the things I will have told you to do are unorthodox. And he says to me, most of the things I told you to write are unorthodox. Most of the books going forward are not going to be typical Christian novels. They're going to be stories that people outside of the church will gravitate to because those are the people that need me. And when they meet you as an author, when they meet you as a director, when they meet you as a producer, when they meet you as a playwright, you can direct them to me. He said, the book is just something to get them interested. And once they're interested and they meet you, they'll meet me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And he's like, all those, all those books that you're reading, you're getting ideas. You're getting ideas of how you could do it in a different way. He's like, you think all those books you're reading are a waste of time? He's like, no. You are reading books and you you are either going to uh your book is going to directly relate them to the kingdom or your book is going to remain secular but it's going to 
going to need people that need you, that need me to you because they like your book and they're going to meet the person behind the book. He's like, most of your books and the movies that you'll produce are ruses. They will be things that non-Christian people would like to read. But, but when, once they read them and like the book, they'll be led to you. And you, your personality, the way you do business, the way you interact, will then teach them about kingdom. He's like, to me, he's like, there's enough Christian entertainment out there. And, but there's not enough uh, secular authors that will lead people to me. And he's like, that is your primary goal. Your primary goal is not to to um, write books that lead people to me. You see, that is a wonderful thing. And yes, some of your books will lead people to me, but most of them, he's like, Rachel, I've crafted you to not take the kingdom to people not in your other creative endeavors, in your preaching. Yes, it's all about me. But in your novel writing, play writing, movie producing, directing, and script writing, it's to lead people to me because they like your art. And they find your art fascinating. And they find the way you handle yourself with integrity and with grace. Um, so yeah, I said all that to say that God is the God of the unorthodox. And some of the things that he's telling you to do may not seem Christian, but they're still him. Because ultimately, uh, they will lead people to him, even if it's a roundabout way, even if it's in uh, real estate and how you operate with your clients, even if it's in teaching and how you operate with your students. You don't have to be a, a, in a Christian environment to share the light of God. In fact, he's calling people into secular environments where people really need Jesus, where people really need Jesus. And because those are the environment, we need Jesus in two places. We need Jesus in Christian environments to help uplift um, people and to bring the kingdom directly to people. And then we need people desperately in secular environments to bring, to lead people to him through their art. And yes, I will write some directly Christian novels and produce some directly Christian movies. But I'm not going to keep myself in that box of I'm a Christian writer, I'm a Christian producer. No, I'm just a producer that happens to love stories. And some of those stories are directly Christian and some of them will not be. But when they meet me, they'll meet Christ. Like how I operate in business meetings or, or whatever, they'll, they'll, they'll say, wow, she's very different than anyone we've ever worked with. And that's how I will lead them to Christ. And 
not by preaching to them, but by them seeing my actions and how I operate in the industry. So guys, I'll see you later. Thank you. Oh, and because I'm writing uh, now, um, I'm going to take a little break um, for the Christmas holiday and plus to finish uh, the first draft of uh, my novel that I was talking about. I'm going to take a little break to finish that. But I will be back for a Christmas sermon somewhere near the end of the month, either the week like of, of Christmas. Sometime I will come on and do a Christmas sermon and I will be back on my regular sermon schedule in January. So I won't, I won't be on this month except at the end of the month for my Christmas sermon. But I will be back in January, my regular Sunday or Saturday schedule. Bye, guys. See you later. Take care.